Greetings, Science Maximites. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today we're going to be looking at the power of mag magnets. You see, magnets are fun things to experiment with because they are really, okay, they're really interesting. Um, this magnet that I've got here is a neodymium magnet or a rare earth magnet. It's one of the, oh, one of the, one of the strongest magnets you can get. Um, a magnet is an object that is attracted to uh, anything that is ferromagnetic, which is iron, nickel, or cobalt. And mag magnets are interesting because they have two sides. There are two, uh, oh, there are two poles. I'd show you, but I can't get the chain off. Hold on one second. Ha-ha! Mm. There are two. Oh, no. There are two poles to every magnet, uh, just like the Earth. There is a North Pole and a South Pole. That's right, the Earth is a giant magnet. So, if you take kitchen magnets, you'll find that there's two different poles. I've written north and south on these ones. They don't normally come like that. If you put the north and the south together, they stick. But if you put the north and north or south and south together, they repel. They repel, see? They don't want to go together at all. And you can force them together if you want, but if you do, they will spring away the second you let them go. Whee! <laughs> But when magnets repel each other, I find that some of the most interesting stuff. Check this out. This is just a small container, and I've got a magnet in here, and I have a loony attached to it so that it fits nicely in the container like that. For the top, I've attached two magnets together, and I have another coin on it. And if you put them in there, I've made sure that the two poles repel each other, which means this magnet will just sit there and float. Magnetic levitation. Very interesting. And you can pop the top on that if you want and just carry around a levitating magnet. Now, there's a couple fancier ways you can levitate stuff with magnets. This is just a wooden frame I've made. Uh, this is completely not necessary. You can use just about anything in your house. A desk lamp works really well. The important part is I've tied a magnet to the end of this arm here. And this is a bolt, which is attracted to the magnet but it's got a thread tied to it, so it can't get there. Just far enough that it will actually hang in mid-air. Look at that, it's not attached to anything, it's just being pulled up by the attraction from the magnet. The thing is, as soon as you pull the bolt away far enough, it will lose the attraction and it'll just fall. Very cool. Here's one that's a little bit more complicated but it's also really neat. This one uses disc magnets, which have a circle or a hole in the middle of them here. And you put two around a pencil and then four more in such a position that you can put the pencil against this wood on the side and it will just levitate on its own. You can even give it a spin. Look at that. Welcome to Shipbuilding for Pirates. I'm Swabby, and I've built some of the finest pirate ships for some of the finest pirates this side of the Caribbean. And I can teach you to do the same. But first, you need to know your basics. Mass and volume. Let's start with volume! <laughs> but not that kind of volume. Which of these two chests do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Which of these two balloons do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Volume is how much space something takes up. Which of these two chests has more volume? Hmm? That's right, they're the same. But which of these two chests has more mass? Which is heavier? Hmm, hard to tell, isn't it? But what if I told you that this one was empty and this one was full of treasure? Oh, ho, 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 ho. loonies. Now, which one has more mass? Hmm, that's right, this one. 
These two chests have the same volume, but this one has more mass. This chest has more volume than that one, but this one... My loonies, that chest does not have as much mass. Volume is how much space something takes up, and mass is how heavy something is. And when you look at them both together, you're looking at density. Join us next time on Shipbuilding for Pirates, and then we'll look at how volume, mass, and density work together to make something float. Oh, my precious, precious loonies. Are you all right, my pretties? They can't talk, so I'm not sure what they're saying. Did you know it's easier to float in salt water, like in the ocean, than it is in fresh water, like a lake or a pool? That's because not all liquids are created equal. They have different densities. This is fresh water, or it doesn't have anything in it. And this is sugar. If I was to put one scoop of sugar in this water and stir it around until it dissolves, now this liquid is more dense than before I put the sugar in. Here's an experiment you can do at home using liquid density. This glass just has regular water with yellow food coloring in it. This glass, green food coloring and half a cup of sugar in it. This one has a full cup of sugar in it and this one has two cups of sugar in it. Now when you do this at home, you'll definitely want an adult to help you because you have to heat the water if you want to dissolve that much sugar in one glass of water. I'm gonna put them all in one container. You can do this at home, and when you do, I suggest you use a very small container because you have to be very careful when you put the layers in. You can use a turkey baster or a straw. When you put your finger on top, the air pressure will hold the liquid in, and you can just drop it in. But these kind of take some time, so I'm going to use the syringe of science. I'm going to use the most dense liquid first because that's the one that's going to want to be on the bottom. I carefully put it on the bottom of the container. The next layer, be very careful, and you'll see that the red and the blue aren't mixing because they have different densities. The blue is heavier than the red. We'll add the green, and you can see, even when it drips into the red, it comes back up to the top because the green liquid isn't as dense as the red liquid, and the denser liquids push the lighter liquid up. And now we're gonna add the yellow, which of course has no sugar in it at all. And there you go. All the layers stay separate. If you put it on a light, you can really see it. Liquid densities. Now, let's max it out. Ta-da! The longest length of liquid layers. 12 liquids all organized by density. Starting from the bottom, we have honey, corn syrup, chocolate syrup, maple syrup, dish soap, whole milk, water, dyed blue, vegetable oil, extra virgin olive oil, rubbing alcohol, baby oil, and lamp oil. Liquid density. I really, really want to mix it up, but it took me a long time to make this, so I'm not going to. Carefully putting this down. And watch out for the baking soda. You never know when it'll get out. And, well, I guess that's just baking soda, huh? Yeah, that's pretty safe. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so this is Baking Soda Vinegar Volcano version two. We have this differently shaped glass. What do you call this again? That's an Erlenmeyer flask. Why is it called that? It's actually named after a scientist. Did he look like that? Was he sort of shaped like this? No. No? Was he just a good chemist? Good scientist, and I think he designed the glass. Oh, see, there you go. So if you want to have a glass named after you, be a good chemist and design a glass. <laughs> I want to make a fill beaker. So this is 100% acetic acid. Yep. And what's the difference between this and vinegar? Vinegar has 5% of this and 95% water. But this is 100%, so it's much stronger. Much stronger. Can you put this on your french fries? No, I wouldn't be putting it on your french fries. No? As chemicals go, how dangerous is this? It's not too dangerous, but you definitely don't want to be breathing it in, and you don't want to be eating it. Or getting it on your skin. That's why I'm wearing these fancy pants gloves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the acetic acid in this. What's this called? That is a graduated cylinder. Because it finished school. <laughs> so it graduated. Now you're going to mix water and food coloring and soap all together yep. and pour it into there? It'll help dissolve some of the baking soda, so hopefully it'll react better with the acid. Sounds good. Face protection. Oh.
All right, that's good. And now, when we do it, I want to add the funnel at the end to like accentuate the concentration of. But I don't know if it's going to go so fast that I won't be able to get it in there. But we'll try it. We'll try it. Vinegar baking soda volcano version two. <laughs> Good thing you got the mask. It smells a lot like vinegar. It's really strong. Oh. That was pretty good. But what, what can we do to make it even bigger? Well, you could try using a different chemical reaction. Ooh, okay. Like what? The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide produces oxygen gas, and so that one's pretty vigorous if you use a catalyst. So we want something that makes a lot of gas so that it makes a lot of bubbles when you put the soap in it. Yep. Great, let's do it. And the sooner we leave that smell, the better, I think, for my, for my taste. Today, we're combining two different chemicals to create a reaction. Sometimes chemicals can combine in a way that makes them very different from how they started out. For example, this is sodium, or Na, on the periodic table. Now, the sodium tablets are in mineral oil because sodium reacts very strongly with water, even the water in the air, or especially the water in my skin. Watch what happens when I drop a sodium tablet into this beaker of water. Very cool and very dangerous. And this is chlorine, or Cl, on the periodic table. Chlorine gas is very poisonous. So, <coughs> so what happens if we combine these two deadly substances? Do we create some sort of super poison? Something more deadly than anything else known to science that causes fear and chaos in chemistry labs all over the land? No, we create Salt. Good old normal table salt. These two substances combine to make NaCl. Salt. Something completely and totally safe. Chemistry. Oh, oh, oh. 